Hi guys, I'm Bobsy and continuing off from where we left off in the last video where we essentially got picking up and equipping items to work. So now we can drag and drop them down here and we can equip them and we can drop them and things should work successfully. What we can also do now is we can start working on actually using the items in our hand. So that could be if we have an axe, we want to be able to swing the axe and so on. And we can do this in a fairly uh, abstracted manner, I think, which would be good. Um, so I think let's first of all, uh, on the item, just have a... Uh, public void that will be use item and we can also make a public void for consume item for example something like that and what we should probably do is we should probably make the item class an abstract and the reason why i want to make it an abstract is because i want us to be able to override these so whenever you want to use it whenever you want to consume it and so on cool so the reason for this uh let's go back a step here and we should probably have some uh, issues i think maybe on our items yeah there we go it's going to have missing scripts because you cannot put directly an abstracted script on. So now we're going to have to make some uh, item scripts. So let's call make a new folder called items. And let's go in and let's make, for example, a resource script. And this will be of type item, something like this. And now we can put this on our metal and on our wood. So if I go back here, I go into items. Uh, I essentially need to, of course, remove the script from them. So that was the metal, this was the wood, like that. And then if I go and just pick both here and I can add the resource script directly to them. Let me throw that up at the top, whoops. And now this will, for example, be wood. This will be metal. Um, and we can, of course, pick, uh, we've got to give them their own rigid bodies as well. So the wood for the wood and the metal for the metal. That should work fine. And then we can go ahead and give them a picture. Let's give the metal a, let's give them the, the square one, I guess, the, oh, I guess the, no, not, not the mask. Give them the UI sprite and let's give the wood the knob or the check mark or whatever, just so we can see that there's a difference. So if we go back in now, you should be able to see that these, this one is wood, uh, that these should still both work. So if I go in here now, pick them up, you should see now they should have two different icons. One is square, one is round. And of course you can give them whatever icons you want. Oh, and of course we now also need to in the inventory manager now of all items, we now need to feed them in here again because they lost their script references. So let's just try that once more. Drag and drop this down, drag and drop this down. And as you can see, we can now equip them, we can drop them and we can do whatever we want with them essentially. Cool, so this now works. Uh, and now we have a little bit of an abstract that's set up. So now we can choose what happens, for example, if you try and consume a resource. But in our case, we don't actually want to do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the item script and now let's make, for example, a tool. And this will also inherit from an item. And this can be, this can override the, I think we called it use, right? What did we call it on the item? We called it use item. So this can override the use item like so and now we can essentially do what we want so we can yeah i think use adding a debug call using tool and let's also just make a consumable immediately um which is also going to be nice and easy so let's call it consumable this will also be of a type item and i think that one was called consume item if i'm not wrong and now we can also debug that out that we're trying to consume an item now let's try and figure out in which cases we do what now the way that i want to do it is in the player inventory uh, if we press certain buttons, so let's actually serialize those. So let's serialize field, private, and this will be a key code, and this will be a use item, and this use item key, and this will be consume item key. And on update, uh, for example, do it down here. We'll make the update, and then if input dot get key down, let's do key code dot. Oh, not key code. Sorry, we want to do use item key. Then we want to use the item. There we go. And similar thing. We can do with the consume item key. We can also call consume item. There we go. And now we can make these methods. So let me go ahead and make consume item and let me go ahead and make use item. And it's really going to be as easy as first of all, checking if the item in hand is null or otherwise we just call use item. And the same thing we really want to do with the consume item. Cool, so now we should be able to always do it with the item that we have in hand. Now an easy way to test this is by, for example, let's make a new one. Let's uh, just copy the metal. I'll just call this an X, for example. I will remove it from its prefab link and I will remove the resource from it. And I will essentially add the, oh, add the tool to it. Put the tool up here at the top, like so. This will be called an ax. The sprite will be, I don't know, let's do drop down arrow. And the rigid body will be its own, like so. And let's make it a prefab. I wanna drag and drop that in here. Let's also go ahead and make the ax just a bit longer more fun so we can recognize it maybe it's a little bit thinner it's more of a stick um cool and now let's go into the inventory and add the axe to the all items list like so now i should be able to pick up the axe 
Um, and essentially, oh, and of course we didn't do anything with the use item. Oh, and I also forgot to override the transform changes. Um, let's go into our player. We need to, of course, change the keys here. So the use item key, I think should just be the mouse zero. Um, I think uh, mouse zero is what it's called, yeah. And the consume key, I think I would just want to be mouse one. Like so, which is, should be the right click. Cool, so now when I pick this up, I equip it. And now when I press left click, you can see it says using tool. And when I right click, it doesn't say consuming. And you can also see if I pick up the other ones here. So I plop those down here. You can also see when I right and left click, nothing happening on these because, well, they're not tools. So only the tool right now is overriding the using item, but you could have other things also overriding it and holding its own functionality. So very cool. So now we essentially have a way to sort of distinct draw distinctions between different types of items while still using our setup from before and not having lost anything of value there. So now let's have it uh, actually do something. So uh, one thing I'd really like to fix is that we can set up the actual rotation of them. So first things first, uh, I'd like the player inventory for when we spawn it. Let's actually spawn it to be in the forward direction of the player. Or the same rotation, I guess. So let's just do transform that rotation. Just to at least have it be consistent when we spawn things. Because I find it a little annoying that they rotate around randomly like that. Let's try and equip this. Boom, there we go. And now you can see now it'll always point forward no matter the direction I'm pointing. Um, we should probably have it be in the direction of the camera, actually. That might work better. Um, that will be fairly easy. This is not the most optimal thing to do. But let me just be lazy here and do the camera rotation. So it'll essentially take the same rotation as the camera. That should have it all, almost always point out straight, I think. There it goes. No matter which direction I look, it'll always be pretty consistent. Cool. And now let me also, on the player, I guess put the item point a little bit down and to the right. Yeah, and I'd actually prefer it being back here. Uh, so it's sort of down, I guess, in hand height. Um, and I guess maybe actually we can have it be the rotation of the transform point. That way we can just change this rotation so it's a little bit up maybe. Uh, and then have that work better. So let's do it item point dot rotation. So here we go. So now when we pick it up, it should be down into the, oops, I didn't equip it. Let's just equip it over here. And there we go. So now it should always be a little bit down and up. Um, and cool. So now you can see if we go out here to our player, you can see how it's equipped here. I can also quickly go onto the player and we can just enable him drawing again or rendering, I suppose. So here, instead of shadows only, we'll just turn on. And there you go. Now you can essentially see a bit of how it looks. Cool. However, one of the other things, this first of all might have been a little bit big, uh, and let me also scale these down a little bit. I think that's going to be nicer. And they will just override the actual override. Okay, cool. Either way, sorry. Um, what I really want to do and want to show you now is we should probably be handling the bodies and the items separately. So what I'm doing here with essentially having the rendering and the actual functionality be on the same place, um, I don't actually think it's the, the right way to go about it. What I think would be a better way, which would give us some more freedom in terms of how the item is also equipped, um, would essentially be to have it be separate, right? So let's let's start by creating a new uh, cube for the wood here. And let me, first of all, actually, let me plop the wood back to being just one on every parameter. So like one, 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 like so, so it's just a cube. And then the body in here is what we actually want to resize. So I'll do something like this. And now from this cube up here, I'll remove the render and the filter, and I'll also remove the collider and so now the collider is on the cube that we have in here and i'll just plop the wood material onto that as well the, the reason for this is because now we can control where the pivot point is because right now we're always going to equip it uh, depending on the pivot point so if we want to equip it by the end of it all we have to do is just move it out a bit so the pivot point is down where we want to grab it and i think this is cleaner and easier to deal with now one thing that this might pose in terms of an issue if i try and save this is if i go now and i click on it i can't pick it up now the reason for not being able to pick this up, uh, also where did the axe go? Am I missing something here? Oh, it did a unity and went through the ground. Thanks unity. <laughs> either way, um, either way, the wood right now we can't pick up because what we're hitting is essentially it's child object. So we want the interact system to be able to make up for this by instead of just checking get components, we also want to um, try and get all components and parents as well. Actually, maybe in order just to make it easier, let's just make this to a list. So let's just do to a list by the end of it because it's easier to extend the list. And then we'll also just do interactables.add range and we'll do hit.collider.getcomponents in parent. And we will also once again be looking for the type of the interactable. There we go. That's essentially all that needs to be added. So now we should be able to also interact with the wood with this new and improved setup. So if I just take this now, there we go. Now we got the wood. And now you'll notice that the way that it's equipped in our hand, you can see our pickup point is here and it's now sticking out. As I mentioned, it's essentially taking the point here and setting it there. 
Cool, so this gives us a, a bit more freedom. Um, now, why does this axe keep falling through the ground? I'm not sure why it would do that, but it does seem to do it pretty consistently, which is interesting. Um, either way, I guess let's try and just modify the other two here as well in a similar way. So let me just do that real quick while it, the video is sped up. Okay, cool. So now with these new setups, first of all, the axe issue was just I needed to set the collision detection to continuous. This isn't the cleanest, but I, I did imagine it was probably Unity missing collisions, and it indeed was. Um, but now you can see all of them have been set to their bodies, and I can essentially set them up uh, how we want to. So now I can put that one at the end of it, and now when we pick that up and equip it, let me do that. And now we should be holding it by its end, right? uh, and we are indeed not because I didn't apply it to the prefab, of course. Silly me. Let's do that again, apply to the prefab, drag it down there, and there we go. Now we're holding it by the end. So now you can see we're holding it essentially how you'd uh, maybe expect a little bit more of me holding an axe or some other tool. And of course, you can always modify exactly how things like this work. You can maybe do something a bit more like this. So it holds it more up and more to the side. If I pick it up, go here, I press one, and there we go. Now it's holding it up here to the side. And when I click, it tries to use the tool. Cool, so I think we have a pretty good system going on here. I'm at least a big fan. Now we can start using it. We of course need to do something with it, but I think that's gonna have to be the next video, which is just gonna be like making the ax and then we can maybe also make it so we can actually hit and damage the resources. Well, I hope you learned something new as always. Please do leave a like, comment and subscribe.